basically what we're doing is going over the ideas of game processing, the proper way to do it. Hey, Rick. Hey, Larry. Love to have you in the studio. You know, I consider you an expert when it comes to processing deer and having the right equipment. And let's go over it and talk about that. Now, this deer here was just shot um, about four days ago. I like to hang my deer, typically, if the conditions are right, for at least four days. What's your opinion on that? Uh, well, I've, I've done a lot of deer in my life. i tell you what my opinion is. Uh, I like debarking them when they're still warm, simply because my hands don't get cold. Okay, <laughs> right. But I think four days is good. You basically allow the enzymes to begin breaking down that meat a little bit. And so if you can hang it for four days and the conditions are proper, and I'm going to talk a lot about that today, Making sure that it's below freezing outside, that's really important if you're going to hang your deer. I mean, right. if you get an early season bow buck, you quite frankly... You, you better gotta, have a cooler. Yeah, you better have a cooler. You better have a place to keep that deer where it's going to stay cold at least below 40 degrees. And we'll see it as we go into this today about the just different muscle groups. And it's pretty quick. I mean, if you've ever done a deer, you'll know you have different muscle groups. And when we start dissecting this hind quarter to get it going, you know, we're going to trim the fat off. We're going to look at those muscle groups. And our knife is going to follow those muscle groups. And that's how we're going to take this thing apart. And it works for a hind quarter, front quarter, any other part of the deer. We have, uh, we can start with a fillet knife. The fillet knife's not just for, for deer, but really getting in there. It's a very flexible blade. If you see, we can get down and we can take silver skin off with it. Uh, you know, the first thing we're gonna start with is a gut hook. You know, first thing we're gonna do basically is, uh, you know, get that first incision, take that gut hook. That's gonna help you make sure you don't cut puncture intestines. That's right. Exactly, puncture the stomach. Um, you know, if anybody's ever had a gut shot deer, Ooh. you know exactly what yeah, that's like. That's a fact. And you don't want to do it yourself, right? You've got a nice clean kill. You want to basically make sure you're using a gut hook. You're bringing that up, or at the very least, get your hands in there and follow up along. If you don't have a gut hook, make sure you're following along the inside and you're cutting so that you don't puncture the intestines, you don't puncture that stomach. And again, that's a place where bacteria starts. We have good bacteria in our system, so do deer but that can turn bad if it gets uh, around the meat and it's not properly chilled, not properly cleaned afterwards. A gut hook helps with that. Next, we have a caping blade. I was telling you earlier. That's kind of your favorite. That's huh? kind of my favorite. Sure. Uh, I like a small blade for doing practically everything. Uh, whether it's field dressing or actually processing, a knife, I, I like a small blade for that. I think a caping blade is the perfect blade for that. So now what I'm going to do is, I told you, I kind of like my caping blade. I'm going to start going through, I'm going to start trimming my fat off. So I'm going to get in there and I'm going to start trimming my fat back. And what I want to do as we're doing this is expose my muscle groups. Okay, So I've kind of found the contour through here and it's maybe not the best angle for the camera to be able to see, but you're going to start seeing what I'm doing here. I'm starting to bring that fat off of there. I'm just going to take it off right there just so the camera can see it. So now I don't really have to have no meat left on there. But what I'm doing is I'm always constantly following that contour between the meat and the fat. And that goes for the silver skin too. So Okay. Okay, we've got the bulk of the fat off of this hind quarter here. Now let's show everybody how you're actually going to break rest of it down, Rick. Sure. So, we, yeah, like you said, we've taken all the fat off. We've kind of trimmed it up a little bit. And now, again, what I want to really focus on are these muscle groups. And a hind quarter is a great place to look at that because your muscle groups are overlapping. And what I was saying earlier was that these the fat will protrude out wherever there is a separation of muscle groups. So in between, we've taken apart the, this particular muscle group with our hands. I do most of this with hand. That's interesting. You know, and, and you get in there and you kind of kind of move things around and you pull them apart. You might have to trim around, especially by bone. You have to trim a little bit with your knife. But for the most part, you can separate your muscle groups with your hands. Once I'll do that, and you'll see it, I'll so kind of take it apart. Doesn't right take here. a lot of effort either, which I'm surprised. No, nope. see so that it. comes right out of there, and now you can see where that muscle group was. But what that exposes for us, more fat, more silver skin, and in my opinion, where a lot of guys will make the mistake is they'll take that hind quarter like this, and they'll start just cutting it off the cubes right off that hind quarter. I have quarter. to admit, that's the way I've been doing it for 30 years. And that's where your gamey flavor right. comes from. So, uh -huh. again, there's nothing wrong with it. You can do it, but you're going to have a gamey flavor to it. There's really no way to mask it. That's where you make your taco seasoning, right? right. Put enough taco seasoning in there, right. we can't taste it. But what we want is something that I can fry up with little onions and a cast iron skillet, and it has a really good flavor to it. And that's where we're going to. This is a really nice cut of meat we just took off of there. Now, what we'll do next is I'll take off the silver skin, I'll trim the rest of the fat, and you see that that silver skin right there that we're going to get off of there and once we have a pure red piece of meat now we got something we can really work with and as I was indicating earlier I really like hind quarters for the steak cuts that are in them there's sure. good roast 
but I also make my whole meat jerky off of this. And as we get into it, I'll show you the grain patterns that run through this. Now, on this particular piece of meat, you can actually begin to see the grain patterns are running like this. As we cut this and as we butcher it up, what we want to do is we want to cut this so those grain patterns, when we tear into it with our teeth, they break off with the grain patterns. That's going to give you what appears to be a more tender piece of meat because it cuts a little bit easier. So that's a little trick to the trade, just like a, a grain on a tree. Meat has the same kind of grain patterns to it, and we want okay. to work with the grain patterns so that it has a more tender piece of meat. Hey, Rick, you've got all the silver skin off of here. It looks pretty delicious. Now, now what, what process are you going to go to? Well, uh, yeah, we got all the silver skin off. We got that all basically ready to go. I'm just going to put it in the tub here. This We just have cold water in here. I'm just going to rinse it off a little bit. Get any of the remaining hairs off. Let her, let her dry in there a little bit. Now I would say we have a really nice piece of meat to go to the next step. Okay. Now, the next step may be just carving it into steaks. It may be putting it on a slicer and making some jerky. What I would normally do is I would normally freeze it at this point. Uh, and I wouldn't freeze it all the way. I maybe put it in my freezer, my deep mm. chest freezer, for about an hour, hour and a half at the most. Just to stiffen it up? A just to bit? stiffen it up. Oh, now, if I'm going to grind it, if I'm going to slice it, giving it that little bit of rigidity makes it a lot easier to put on a slicer. I slice it, it holds its form as I slice it through, and I get a consistent cut through the whole thing. On a grinder, it stays cold through the whole process, but allows the blades to grab that meat, and it grinds a lot cleaner as a result of it being frozen. So either way, after I rinse it off like this, I, again, I want to get my meat as cold as possible, as quick as possible, so freezing it up helps with that. Right. But if I'm going to process yet that day, I'll put this, I'll do one piece at a time, put, you know, put it in the freezer, might vacuum seal it, depending on what I'm going to do next. I'll put it in the freezer, but let that stiffen up, and then we go on to the next step. I'll do the rest of the hind quarter at that point, and I'll kind of keep it organized so that I know which one froze first. What I want is about a quarter inch of frozen around the outside. So on a piece like this, which is a few pounds at this point, I want that thing about a quarter inch frozen around the outside. That helps keep it rigid through the whole process, but it also helps keep it cold through the whole process. Keeping it cold, keeping it clean, these are the keys to safe processing as well. So the next thing we want to do is we have a nice piece of meat here, and, and this I thought would be a good opportunity for us. Again, look at that grain pattern, and you can kind of see as I start pulling this apart, you see that grain pattern on this piece. It runs. it runs like this. Yep. Every piece of meat's going to have a piece of that. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do with this one. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it along that grain pattern. You see how easy it cuts, Boy, too. Boy, it just falls apart. It falls apart. Now, this is a really nice cut of meat. So I'm cutting it along with the grain pattern to get my, get my chunks ready to go. Now, again, I can freeze them like this. If I don't have as much time, this freezes up a little bit faster. But what I'm going to want to do is whenever I'm making my jerky or I'm making my steaks, I want to cut it in such a way as when I bite into it, I'm tearing away with these grain patterns. That's going to make that meat taste more tender, be a little bit more flavorful even as you're doing it because you're not tearing through it. It doesn't seem like it's a lot of work to eat it. So that's that grain pattern I'm talking about on here. And again, this is where I would start freezing it up. We're going to make this one into whole meat jerky. So why don't we get the slicer all set okay. up and we'll slice some of these and I'll show you how to do that next. That sounds good. If you're having problems getting lucky with the ladies, maybe you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel down below.